Trilobites, meaning three lobes, are famous group of extinct marine arthropods belonging to class Trilobita. They evolved during early Cambrian period some 526 million years ago and flourished throughout the lower Paleozoic era and almost declined to extinction during the Devonian. The trilobites were among the most successful of all early animals strolling on oceans for over 270 million years. Trilobites include 10 orders, 5000 genera and 17000 species. Trilobites had many lifestyles. Some moved over the seabed as predators, some scavengers or filter feeders and some swam feeding on planktons, even probably symbiotic with sulfur bacterium. Their position in mandibulata that is myrapoda plus crustacea plus hexapoda stem group may be a more prudent alternative. In this program we shall talk about phylogeny, relationship with other taxa and morphology of trilobites, whereas the other topics as development, larval forms, fossil records, origin, divergence and final extinction, evolutionary trends, importance will be covered in the next program on trilobites too. Phylogeny. Despite their rich fossil record with thousands of genera found throughout the world, the taxonomy and phylogeny of trilobites have many uncertainties. Except possibly for the members of the order Phacopida, all nine trilobite orders appeared prior to the end of the Cambrian. Relationship to other taxa. When soft part anatomy was recovered from the fossil record, the trilobites were originally allied to the crustacea. However, this suggestion has since fallen out of favor and their relationship with the chilicerates in a clan termed arachnomorpha, that is arachnata, was invoked for some time. A position in the mandibulata that is equal to myrapoda plus crustacea plus hexapoda stem group may be a more prudent alternative. Morphology. When trilobites are found only, the exoskeleton is preserved and that too often in an incomplete state. But in a handful of locations, dentifiable soft body parts that is legs, keels, musculature and digestive tract and enigmatic traces of other structures, example fine details of eye structure as well as the exoskeleton are recorded. It is from these records their morphology is alleged. Trilobites range in length from 1 mm to 72 cm with a typical size range of 3 to 10 cm. The world's largest trilobite, Isotilus rex, was found in 1998 by Canadian scientists in the Ordovician rocks on the shores of Hudson Bay. The trilobite body is divided into three major distinctive sections that is tegmata. Number one, cephalon that is the head. Number two, thorax that is the body. And number three, pygidium that is the tail. The exoskeleton is composed of calcite and calcium phosphate minerals in a protein lattice of chitin that covers the upper dorsal surface of the trilobite and curled round the lower edge to produce a small fringe called the doubler. As might be expected for a group of animals comprising approximately 5000 genera, the morphology and description of trilobites ought to be complex. However, despite morphological complexity and an unclear position within higher classifications, there are a number of characters that distinguish the trilobites from other arthropods. A generally sub-elliptical dorsal chitinous exoskeleton divided longitudinally into three distinct lobes from which the group gets its name, having a distinct relative large head shield that is the cephalon articulating axially with a thorax comprising articulated transverse segments the hindmost of which are almost invariably fused to form a tail shield 
that is pygidium. While describing differences between trilobitexa, the presence, size and shape of the cephalic features are often taken into consideration. During molting, the exoskeleton generally split between the head and the thorax. Hence, many trilobite fossils are missing one or the other counterpart. In most groups, facial sutures on the cephalon help to facilitate molting. Similar to lobsters and crabs, trilobites would have physically grown between the molt stage and the hardening of the new exoskeleton. Terminologies Cephalon Morphology of the trilobite cephalon The subdivisions can be further broken down into different areas used in describing trilobite cephalic morphology. 1. Preocular area 2. Palpebral area 3. Postocular area 4. Posterior lateral projection 5. Occipital ring 6. Glabella 7. Posterior area 8. Lateral border 9. Labyrinthinal area 10. Preglabellar area The cephalon of trilobites is highly variable with a lot of morphological complexity. The glabella forms a dome underneath which set the crop or the stomach. Generally, the exoskeleton has few distinguishing ventral features, but the cephalon often preserves muscle attachment scars and occasionally the hypostome. A small rigid plate comparable to the ventral plate in other arthropods. A toothless mouth and stomach lay upon the hypostome. Facial sutures. Facial or cephalic sutures are the natural fracture lines in the cephalon of trilobites. Their function is to assist the trilobite in shedding its old exoskeleton during ectysis, that is molting. The types of sutures found in different species are used extensively in the taxonomy and phylogeny of trilobites. Rostrum The rostrum or the rostral plate is a distinct part of the doubler located at the front of the cephalon. It is separated from the rest of the doubler by the rostral suture. During molting in trilobites, like paradoxides, the rostrum is used to anchor the front part of the trilobite as the cranidium separates from the labyrinthina. The opening created by the arcing of the body provides an exit for the molting trilobite. It is absent in some trilobites like lenchnostoma. Hypostome. The hypostome is the hard mouth part of the trilobite found on the ventral side of the cephalon, typically below the glabella. Hypostome can be classified into three types based on whether they are permanently attached to the rostrum or not and whether they are aligned to the anterior dorsal tip of the glabella. Thorax The thorax is a series of articulated segments that lie between the cephalon and pygidium. The number of segments varies between 2 to 61 with most species in the 2 to 16 range. Each segment consists of the central axial ring and the outer pleura which protected the limbs and gills. The pleurae are sometimes abbreviated or extended to form long spines. Trilobite fossils are often found enrolled, that is curled up, like modern pill bugs for protection. Evidence suggests enrollment helped protect against the inherent weakness of the arthropod cuticle that was exploited by anomalocrates, the dense predators. Some trilobites achieved a fully closed capsule, example Phacops, 
while others with long pleural spines, example selenopeltis, left a gap at the sides or those with a small pygidium. Pygidium. The pygidium is formed from a number of segments and telson fused together. Segments in the pygidium are similar to the thoracic segments bearing biremous limbs but are not articulated. Trilobites can be described based on pygidium being micropygus that is smaller than the cephalon, sub-isopygus that is sub-equal to cephalon, isopygus that is equal to the size of a cephalon or macropygus that is larger than a cephalon. Prosopon that is the surface sculpture. Trilobite exoskeletons show a variety of small scale structures collectively called prosopon. Prosopon does not include large scale extensions of the cuticle, example hollow pleural spines, but to finer scale features such as ribbings, domes, pustules, pittings, ridging and perforations. The exact purpose of the prosopon is not resolved but suggestions include structural strengthening, sensory pits or hairs, preventing predator attacks and maintaining aeration while enrolled. In one example, elementary ridge networks easily visible in Cambrian trilobites might have been either digestive or respiratory tubes in cephalon and the other regions. Spines. Some trilobites, order Lekida, evolved elaborate spiny forms. Examples of these specimens have been found in the hammer legdat formation of Alnif in Morocco. Spectacular spined trilobites have also been found in Western Russia, Oklahoma, USA, and Ontario, that is Canada. Some trilobites had horns on their heads similar to those of modern beetles. Based on the size, location and shape of the horns, the most likely use of the horns was combat for mates, making the Esaphida family Rephidophorida the earliest exemplars of this behavior. Another use for these spines is protection from predators. When enrolled, trilobites could protect their softer innards. A conclusion likely to be applicable to other trilobites as well, such as in the phacopid trilobite genus Velicerops that developed spectacular tridents. Soft body parts. Only 21 or so species are described from which soft body parts are preserved. So some features, example, the posterior antineform cerci, preserved only in Olinoides serratus, remain difficult to assess in the wider picture. Appendages. Trilobites had a single pair of preoral antennae and otherwise undifferentiated biremous limbs. Two, three or four cephalic pairs followed by a variable number of thorax plus pygidium pairs. Each exopodite, that is the walking leg, had six or seven segments homologous to other early arthropods. Exopodites are attached to the coxa, which also bore a feather-like epipodite or gill branch which was used for respiration and in some species swimming. The base of the coxa, the gnathobase, sometimes have heavy spiny adaptations that were used to tear at the tissues of prey. The last exopodite segment usually had claws or spines. Many examples of hairs on the legs suggest adaptations for feeding as for the gnathobases or sensory organs to help with walking. Digestive tract. 
the toothless mouth of trilobites was situated on the rear edge of the hypostome that is facing backwards in front of the legs attached to the cephalon. Mouth is linked by a small esophagus to the stomach that lay forward of the mouth below the glabella. The intestine led backwards from there to the pygidium. Feeding limbs attached to the cephalon are thought to have fed food into the mouth, possibly slicing the food on the hypostome and or gnathobasis first. Alternative lifestyles are suggested with the cephalic legs used to disturb the sediment to make food available. A large glabella implying a large stomach coupled with an impendent hypostome has been used as evidence of more complex food sources, example possibly a carnivorous lifestyle. Internal organs While there is a direct and implied evidence for the presence and location of the mouth, stomach and digestive tract, the presence of heart, brain and liver are only implied although present in many reconstructions with little direct geological evidence. Musculature Although rarely preserved, long lateral muscles extended from the cephalon to midway down the pygidium, attaching to the axial rings allowing enrollment while separate muscles on the legs tucked them out of the way. Sensory organs Many trilobites had complex eyes. They also had a pair of antenna. Some trilobites were blind, probably living too deep in the sea for light to reach them. As such, they became secondarily blind in this branch of trilobite evolution. Other trilobites, example Fecus rana and Erbenkili erbini, had large eyes that were for use in more well-lit predator-filled waters. Antenna The pair of antenna suspected in most trilobites and preserved in a few examples were highly flexible to allow them to be retracted when the trilobite was enrolled. Also, one species, Oelinoides serratus, preserves antenna-like cerci that project from the rear of the trilobite. Eyes Even the earliest trilobites had complex compound eyes with lenses made up of calcite, a characteristic of all trilobite eyes, confirming that the eyes of the arthropods and probably other animals could have developed before the Cambrian. Improving eyesight of both predator and prey in the marine environments has been suggested as one of the evolutionary pressures furthering an apparent rapid development of new life forms during what is known as the Cambrian explosion. Their eyes were typically compound with each lens being an elongated prism. The number of lenses in such an eye varied. Some trilobites had only one, while some had thousands of lenses in a single eye. In compound eyes, the lenses were typically arranged hexagonally. The fossil record of trilobite eyes is complete enough that their evolution can be studied through time which compensates to some extent the lack of preservation of soft internal parts. Secondary blindness is common, particularly in long-relieved groups such as Agnosida, Trinucleoidea. In Protidae and Phacopina from Western Europe and particularly Tropidocorphina from France so progressively eye reduction between closely related species 
that eventually leads to blindness. Several other structures on the trilobites have been explained as photoreceptors. Of particular interest are macula, the small areas of thinned cuticle on the underside of the hypostome. In some trilobites, maculae are suggested to function as simple ventral eyes that could have detected night and day or allowed a trilobite to navigate while swimming or turned upside down. Sensory pits. There are several types of prosopon that have been suggested as sensory apparatus collecting chemical or vibrational signals. The connection between large pitted fringes on the cephalon of Harpetidae and trinucleoidea with corresponding small or absent eyes makes for an interesting possibility of the fringe as a compound ear. What we saw in the entire program was that trilobites evolved during early Cambrian period some 526 million years ago. It comprises about 5000 genera and 10 orders including 17,000 species. They finally became extinct during the mass extinction period at the end of Permain about 250 million years ago. The trilobite body is divided into three major divisions that is called as sections or tegmata, namely head that is also called as cephalon, thorax that is called as body and pygidium or the tail. The exoskeleton is composed of calcite and calcium phosphate minerals in the protein lattice of chitin. Only 21 or so species are described from which soft body parts are preserved so some features remain difficult to assess in the wider picture. This is in continuation with trilobites 1 and here development, larval forms, fossil records, origins, divergence and final extinction, evolutionary trends and importance are discussed about. Development Trilobites grew through successive mold stages called instars in which existing segments increased in the size and new trunk segments appeared at a subterminal generative zone during the anamorphic phase of development. This was followed by the epimorphic developmental phase in which the animal continued to grow and molt, but no new trunk segments were expressed in the exoskeleton. The combination of anamorphic and epimorphic growth constitutes the hemi-anamorphic developmental mode that is common among many living arthropods. Trilobite development was unusual in the way in which articulations developed between segments and changes in the development of articulation gave rise to conventionally recognized developmental phases of the trilobite life cycle divided into three stages 
which are not readily compared with those of other arthropods. Actual growth and change in external form of the trilobite would have occurred when the trilobite was soft celled following molting and before the next exoskeleton hardened. Larval forms Trilobite larvae are known from the Cambrian to the Carboniferous and from all suborders, as in stars from closely related taxa are more similar than in stars from distantly related taxa. Trilobite larvae provides morphological information important in evaluating high level phylogenetic relationship among trilobites. Despite the absence of supporting fossil evidence, their similarity to living arthropods has led to the belief that trilobites multiplied sexually and produced eggs. Some species may have kept eggs or larvae in a brood pouch forward of the glabella, particularly when the ecological niche was challenging to larvae. Size and morphology of the first calcified stage are highly variable between but not within trilobite taxa, suggesting some trilobites passed through more growth within the eggs than others. Early developmental stages prior to calcification of the exoskeleton are a possibility suggested for phallotaspis, but so is calcification and hatching coinciding. Some trilobites showed a marked transition in morphology at one particular instar. It is worth noting that trilobites with all protaspid stages solely planktonic and later meraspid stages benthic example acephids failed to last through Ordovician extinctions. Trilobites that were planktonic for only the first protaspid stage before metamorphosing into benthic forms survived. Example liquids, phacopids, Pelagic larval lifestyle proved ill-adapted to the rapid onset of global climatic cooling and loss of tropical self-habitats during the Ordovician. Fossil record The earliest trilobites known from the fossil records are Phallotaspis, order Redlichidae, suborder Onilina, superfamily Phallotaspidoidea and Begontinids order Tychoparidae, superfamily Ellipsocephaloidae, dated to some 540 to 520 million years ago. Contenders for the earliest trilobites include Prophallotaspis jetcunensis from Siberia, Fritzaspis species from Western USA, Eupetida antica from Morocco, and Serenia gordensis from Spain. All trilobites are thought to have originated in the present day Siberia with subsequent distribution and radiation from this location. Phallotaspids lack facial sutures, that is to say, Phallotaspids are thought to predate facial sutures as opposed to a group that secondarily lost facial sutures. Phallotaspids are strongly suggested to be the ancestral trilobite stock. Absence of facial sutures, apparently uncalcified protaspid stages and phallotaspids underlying predating or coexisting with all other trilobite occurrences. However, recent developments suggest the picture is more complicated and likely to change as more information comes to light. Origins Early trilobites show all of the features of trilobite group as a whole. 
there do not seem to be any transitional or ancestral forms showing or combining the features of trilobites with other groups. Example, early arthropods. Morphological similarities between trilobites and early arthropod-like creatures such as Prigina, Paravencorina and other trilobitomorphs of the Adiacaran period of the Precambrian are ambiguous enough to make detailed analysis of their ancestry far from compelling. Morphological similarities between early trilobites and other Cambrian arthropods, example the Burgess shale fauna and Maotian Shan shales fauna, make analysis of the ancestral relationship difficult. However, it is still reasonable to assume that the trilobites share a common ancestor with other arthropods prior to the Adiacaran Cambrian boundary. Evidence suggests significant diversification had already occurred prior to the preservation of trilobites in the fossil record, easily allowing for the sudden appearance of diverse trilobite groups with complex derived characteristics, example eyes. Divergence and final extinction. Exactly why the trilobites became extinct is not clear. With repeated extinction events, often followed by apparent recovery throughout the trilobite fossil record, a combination of causes is likely. After the extinction event at the end of the Devonian, what trilobite diversity remained was bottlenecked into the order Protidae. Decreasing diversity of genera limited to shallow water and shelf habitats coupled with a drastic lowering of sea level that is regression meant that the final decline of trilobites happened shortly before the end Permian mass extinction event. With so many marine species involved in the Permian extinction, the end of nearly 300 million successful years for the trilobite is hardly surprising. The closest extant relatives of trilobites might be the horseshoe crabs or the cephalocarids. For such a long lasting group of animals, it is no surprise that trilobite evolutionary history is marked by a number of extinction events where unsuccessful groups perished while surviving groups diversified to fill ecological niche with more successful adaptations. Generally, trilobites maintained high diversity levels throughout the Cambrian and Ordovician periods before entering a dawn-out decline in the Devonian, culminating in final extinction of the last few survivors at the end of the Permian period. Evolutionary Trends Principal evolutionary trends from primitive morphologies, example Eoridilicids include the origin of new types of eyes, improvement of enrollment and articulation mechanisms, increased size of pygidium, that is micropygy to isopygy, and development of extreme spinosity in certain groups. Changes also included narrowing of the thorax and increasing or decreasing numbers of thoracic segments. Specific changes to the cephalon are also noted. Variable glabella size and shape, position of the eyes and facial sutures and hypostome. Several morphologies appeared independently within different major taxa, example eye reduction or miniaturization. Fossil distribution 
trilobites appear to have been exclusively marine organisms since the fossilized remains of trilobites are always found in the rocks containing fossils of other saltwater animals such as brachiopods, crinoids and corals. Within the marine paleo environment, trilobites were found in a broad range from extremely shallow water to very deep water. Trilobites like brachiopods, crinoids and corals are found on all modern continents and occupied every ancient ocean from which Paleozoic fossils have been collected. Importance or Ethnobiology The study of Paleozoic trilobites in the Welsh-English borders by Nilesh Eldridge was fundamental in formulating and testing punctuated equilibrium as a mechanism of evolution. Identification of the Atlantic and Pacific trilobite faunas in North America and Europe implied the closure of Iapetus Ocean producing the Iapetus suture, thus providing important supporting evidence for the theory of continental drift. Trilobites have been important in estimating the rate of speciation during the period known as the Cambrian explosion because they are the most diverse group of metazoans known from the fossil record of the early Cambrian. Trilobites are excellent stratigraphic markers of the Cambrian period. Researchers who find trilobites with elementary prosopon and a micropygium have found early Cambrian strata. Most of the Cambrian stratigraphy is based on the use of trilobite marker fossils. Trilobites are the state fossils of Ohio, example Isotilus, Wisconsin, example Calumny, and Pennsylvania, example Phacopus rana. Until the early 1900s, the Ate Indians of Atta wore trilobites, which they called Pachavi, that is little water bugs, as amulets. A hole was bored in the head and the fossil was worn on a string. We have seen in this program the paleological details of the trilobites, their relationship with other taxa, and morphological details with the fossil records and finally their extinction from the face of the planet.